Thank you very much. Boy, what a crowd. What a crowd. And you've got thousands and thousands of people standing outside trying to get it. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you know, when I came over, I was just watching the television. I watched one of the commentators say that we have a few thousand people here. A few thousand. You know what a few thousand people? That means 3,000 people. He said, yeah, we have a few thousand people. And I said, oh, these people, forget it. This is not a few thousand. To me, a few thousand is three. This is no three. This is 13 or 15, but this is no three. And this is 20 if we get them in. So we'll try getting them in, but let's start, right? Thank you, everybody, for being here. In 12 days, we are going to win Ohio, and we are going to win back the White House. Believe me, it's about time. A brand new poll. I love the good polls when they're accurate, even if they're against me, which aren't too many against us, right, if they're accurate. But a brand new poll just came out from Remington Research, highly respected, has us four points up in Ohio. And we're leading in Florida, and we're leading in Iowa, and we're leading in a lot of places. They're starting to get very nervous, the press. The dishonest media, world's most dishonest people. I'm trying to figure out who is more dishonest. Crooked Hillary Clinton or the media? <laughs> I'm not sure. That's a close one. Early what? Early voting, right? Everybody, did you vote? Did you vote yet? Early voting is underway, so make sure to get out and vote, right? Who's voted? Who has voted? Whoa. That's great. So get out and vote. And you know November 8th is your last day, but if you do it before, then that's good, too. And I love Ohio. I worked in Ohio. You know, I worked here. At the very beginning of my career, I worked in Ohio and Cincinnati, and I'll tell you what, I love the people of Ohio. And I was right next to Kentucky, and I'd go across the line. I love the people of Kentucky. They've been so great, too, right? Yeah, come on. 75 percent of the American people think our country is on the wrong track, which is certainly is. Who are the other 25 percent? Two of these people. 25 percent think we're on the right track? We're going to fix it, and we're going to get our country back on the right track very, very fast. Real change begins with immediately, immediately replacing and repealing Obamacare. Disaster. It's been a disaster from the day it was approved. It should have never been approved. It was approved by lies. You can keep your doctor, lie. You can keep your plan, lie. 28 times he said, keep your doctor, keep your plan. All lies. It has just been announced that Americans are going to experience another massive double-digit hike in Obamacare premiums, including an 11 — think of this one. If you live in the great state of Arizona, which not too many of — who goes to Arizona? It's a great place. 116 percent increase in the premiums. You live in Arizona. Oh, don't smile, because you know what? It's going to happen to you, too. It's going to happen. It is a total catastrophe, Obamacare, in this country. And Hillary Clinton wants to keep it and make it even more expensive, and it's never going to work. Even Bill Clinton admitted that Obamacare is the craziest thing in the world where people wind up with their premiums doubled and their coverage cut in half. No good. Job-killing Obamacare is just one more way. The system is rigged. Our system is rigged. 
Clinton wants to double down on Obamacare, destroying American health care forever. And that's what's happening. You see it. Does everybody agree? I mean, that has it. You agree. Just this year, Hillary Clinton declared that Obamacare is one of the greatest accomplishments of President Obama, of the Democratic Party, and of our country. Can you believe it? And this is who you're going to have as president? I don't think so. She's got bad judgment. Remember Bernie Sanders? Said she's got bad judgment. She does. Here in Ohio, another five insurance companies are dropping out of Obamacare. They're out, which means you don't have many left to negotiate with, folks. Good luck. That means all of the residents covered by plans from these companies will be getting cancellation notices very soon. It is catastrophic. Replacing Obamacare is one of the single most important reasons why we want to win on November 8th. Real change also means getting rid of the corruption in Washington. Crooked Hillary Clinton bleached and deleted 33,000 emails after a congressional subpoena, lied to Congress under oath, and then made 13 iPhones disappear, some with a hammer. Unbelievable. <laughs> Who here has gotten rid of their phones with a hammer? Anybody in the room? <laughs> Boy, this place is packed. That person? Why? How come? What business are you in, sir? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. <laughs> now, in another new report, we're learning that Hillary Clinton's State Department wasted hundreds of millions of dollars of your hard-earned taxpayer spending on a wild bunch of things. Here are some of the kinds of shocking revelations about Hillary's spending habits. These are all State Department expenditures during her tenure. $5.4 million on a no-bid contract for Crystal Stemware. $167.5 million on cost overruns at the embassy in Afghanistan. Over $200 million on mostly unused police training facilities in Iraq. $79,000 to buy copies of President Obama's books. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful deal. $53 to polish marble at the Brazilian Embassy. That's a great deal. $630,000 to try and make the State... Oh, this is a good one. To try and make the State Department Facebook pages more popular. Doesn't she understand? You need personality to do that. Not money. You need personality. Not a lot of personality, though. Even though she'd get millions of dollars to make speeches. I tell you what, that wasn't a good deal. $216,000 to hire an event planner for a 4th of July party in Madrid. $88,000 to send three comedians to India. These are the things. More than $250,000 to purchase art in Mexico, where they're taking our companies and our jobs. Now we're buying art. We are going to build the wall 100% and Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Don't worry about it. And 410000 to purchase art in China. The elites in government, like Hillary Clinton, believe they're entitled to do whatever they want. Hillary Clinton has never earned an honest dollar. Well, I think that's really, you know, hey, let's put it this way. What she's done to our country 
is a disgrace. And she should be ashamed of herself. She lives the high life at your expense, making money off the rig system. And it is a rig system. Are you starting to agree with me about the rig system? This is an election between the small handful of people who benefit from the corrupt system and the great majority of American citizens who are the victims of that same corruption. Those who benefit from the corruption will say and do anything to keep it the way it is. They don't want change. Washington insiders, including the corrupt media, they are so dishonest, look down on hardworking people who make a very honest and, you know, really a fought-for living. And it's tough. It's tough when our country allows your companies to all leave and fire everybody. Pretty tough, isn't it? The corrupt political class takes pride in ripping off the American people. Now these same elites, the people who brought us every disastrous foreign war, all of these horrible wars that they never win. We go into wars, they never win the wars. They just go on forever. Disastrous. And then they brought us these horrible trade deals, are spending millions to try to put Hillary in the White House so she can keep the deal going on and keep what we really love about our country, the greatness of our country, from the American people. It's not going to happen longer. November 8th, everybody. Hillary Clinton said she left the White House dead broke, and now they're worth over $200 million. They didn't create anything, produce anything, invent anything. All they did was sell favors, sell access, and sell out the American worker. Uranium is right. Uranium to Russia. He just said uranium. Uranium to Russia. Hillary even sold out our nation's security with her illegal private server, knowing full well it would put you and your family in danger. As moms across this nation put their children to bed each night with a prayer for safety and peace, Hillary was knowingly putting those same families at risk by putting our confidential secrets on this illegal private server. But for Hillary, it seems, anything is okay as long as it increases whatever it was she was looking for. I'm running to put a stop to the theft of our great American prosperity. We're going to do it. I'm running to put an end to corruption. I'm running to expose the crimes of our ruling class and give this country back to the middle class and to the people, to the people. Hillary pushes trade deals like the Trans-Pacific Partnership that enrich your donors and strip the jobs out of your community. And then she says at the debate, remember? She never called it the gold standard. That's what she said. But at the next debate, which I don't want to brag, but I won the debates, okay? I'm not going to brag. It wasn't hard. She was very tired at the end of those debates. Did you notice? The scenes of her going to the car were not pretty. She wants to raise your taxes, even as she used those taxes to spend lavishly on wasteful projects at the State Department. She pledges open borders. That means there goes your country. There goes your country, open borders. In secret to her donors, even as it causes the loss of millions of American jobs, and thousands of American lives. You see what's happening in terms of safety and security. She talks about the values of tolerance, yet proposes to issue massive numbers of visas to place, and, and think of this, visas all over, to places where women and gays and minorities and horribly oppressed and brutalized. I mean, you see what's happening. Countries are pouring money into her and her husband and you see what some of these countries do to women and gays and to so many others. And she should give that 
money back to those countries. But she takes money from these regimes without apology and doesn't worry about how extremism brought onto our shores will affect the quality of life for you or your family. Hillary has access to the best doctors in the world, but wants you and your children to live under Obamacare, which is a catastrophe. And she doesn't want to repeal it, and she doesn't want to replace it. She wants it to get bigger and more expensive. I'm running to end the rule of this corrupt ruling class. And I was, I, I have to tell you, you know, I was on the other side of this equation, folks. I didn't need to do this. I did not need to do this. But I love this country. I love the people of this country. And we did it. And you know what? It's a movement like they've never seen before. Never. And we're going to give government back to the people. I want the entire corrupt Washington establishment to hear and to hear the words I'm about to say. When we win, you know, I've been saying, I've been saying if we win, because I want to be nice, right? But the, the people are getting angry at me, so we'll just say. When we win on November 8th, we are going to Washington, D.C., and we are going to drain the swamp. So cute. I see this young boy here, and he's screaming, drain the swamp. He's this big. How cute. He's learning young. Learning young about our government. Very cute. You know, I didn't like the expression. I started it, what, a week ago, right? Drain the swamp. And I said, I don't like it. And the people were going crazy. They loved it. All of a sudden, I like it. It's like Frank Sinatra was a special guy, a difficult guy. But he had songs he didn't like. But they became his biggest songs, so he liked them. And Drain the Swamp, I'm starting to like it a lot. Do you agree? It's very, very reflective of what we're trying to do. At the core of my contract, and that's a contract with America and the American people, is a plan, and our plan, to bring back our jobs. We are living through the single greatest jobs theft in the history of the world. Look at what's happened to not only Ohio, everybody, everything, our country. Ohio has lost one in four manufacturing jobs since NAFTA, a deal signed by Bill Clinton and supported strongly by his lovely wife, Hillary. We've lost 70,000 factories since China entered the World Trade Organization. Another Bill and Hillary-backed disaster. The steel industry has been hit so hard. U.S. Steel in Lorraine laid off at least 600 workers in 2015. And that's after years of doing lots of layoffs. Republic Steel laid off over 200 workers this year. A Trump administration will immediately be begin, and I have to do this, we will immediately begin renegotiating NAFTA. And if we don't get the deal we want, we will terminate NAFTA and get a much better and stronger and fairer deal for our workers and our country. We will also stand up to the Chinese currency manipulation, of which they're grandmasters. And we will stop separately, because China right now is not in Trans-Pacific Partnership, but they want to be in it at a later date when they find out how good it is. They want to wait. We will become 
a rich nation again. But to be a rich nation, we must also be a safe nation. Hillary Clinton unleashed ISIS onto the world with the vacuum. Look, she has created with Obama the way they — we should have never been in Iraq, but we should have never, ever gotten out the way they got out. And the next time we attack whoever we're going to attack, maybe we could use a little bit of — of — what's the best word? Surprise. Right? Maybe we could use a little bit of, like, the element of surprise. Would that be possible? Instead of four months ago, three months ago, two months ago, we're going into a Mosul in three months. So we're going to — in the meantime, hey, look, these people are tough and they're smart. We were going in to get the leaders, because the leaders of ISIS, they thought, lived in Mosul. They probably did. But they were gone about, what, 12 seconds after they heard? <laughs> they were gone. So there we lose that. In addition, the fighters have really trenched in, made it much tougher. The element of surprise. The element of surprise. So sad. And it's a tough — it's a tough battle. These people are using human shields. They're fighting hard. They've been preparing. And I've been seeing four months ago, and then three months ago. Then two months ago, they said, we're going into Mosul. Then a week ago, I heard, We'll be attacking sometime tomorrow. What the hell is wrong? <laughs> I always say, you know, I had great respect for General George Patton, although today he'd have a hard time being a general because he wasn't exactly politically correct. He was a little on the rough side. But could you imagine? <laughs> He's been known to slap a soldier who was not exactly the kind of soldier he liked. In other words, a soldier that wasn't so brave. He'd been known to slap. Now, if that happened here, they'd — oh, boy, can you imagine if that would happen today? But his people loved him, and his people would fight for him. And he wants to take care of his people because he loved his people. He loved his people. Thank you. He just said, we'll fight for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But he wouldn't subject his people to announcing four and three and two in one month, and then a week, and then two days. We're going in tomorrow. This is crazy. This is crazy. And he wouldn't subject, because these were smart people. These were great military men that didn't have — well, I mean, look, they had different presidents than what we have. What we have is somebody that, honestly, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> doesn't know what he's doing. Don't forget. We shouldn't even be fighting for Mosul. You know, we had Mosul. But when we left, they took it over. So now we have to go get it again. But we had Mosul. You know that. We left in such a dumb way, we just left. And then ISIS came and took it over. Remember, the junior varsity came and took it over, right? So now we're getting it again. But you're not going to get the people, and you're not going to get the leaders because they're gone long ago. So we have to be smarter. We need people that know what's going on with life and we don't have that right now. Thank you. Thank you. We need Donald Trump. Now, Hillary Clinton wants a 550 percent increase in Syrian refugees coming into our country, over and above the thousands and thousands that are coming in under President Obama. Who, by the way, who, by the way, should stop campaigning for Hillary Clinton, get to the office, create jobs, help our military, help our vets who have been horribly treated. I mean, this guy's campaigning. Well, that's all he likes to do is campaign. Boy, oh boy, I got more people campaigning against me. I got Biden. He said, I'd like to take him behind the gym. Oh, I dream of that. Biden. You know what you do with Biden? You go like this. And he'd fall over. Just Tough guy, Mr. Tough guy. Mr. Tough guy. Just a little bit of a paw, and he's gone. Another beauty.
Can you imagine if I ever made that statement? Donald Trump is a bully. He threatened Vice President Biden. Donald Trump is a bully. Can you imagine? But he can say it. Everyone thought, oh, that was a wonderful statement. Oh, oh, that was a wonder. Give me a break. These people are the world's most. They are so bad. Biden. I dream about Biden. Boy, would that be easy. That would be an easy function. A Trump administration will suspend the Syrian refugee program. And I want to build safe havens, but we have to use money from the Gulf states. They have plenty of money, and they're not doing the job. But they got a lot of money. But I want to see safe havens. We're all in the same thing. But we can't take people in this country who may do tremendous harm to us someday. When you look at what's going on in Germany and Paris and all over France, you look at what's going on in Belgium, you look at what's going on throughout the world, and we're taking people in by the tens of thousands. Hillary wants to increase it by 550 percent. That alone means, frankly, you shouldn't be voting for Hillary Clinton. Obamacare, you shouldn't be voting for Hillary Clinton. She wants to keep it. Taxes, she wants to raise your taxes. I'm lowering your taxes. Believe me, this country can't take a tax hike. So let me state this and state it very clearly. If I'm elected president, I'm going to keep <laughs> radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. We're going to keep them out. We're not going to be reading about — they're not going to be reading about us in a hundred years and talking about the new version of the Trojan horse, okay? You know what that means, right? Not going to happen. A Trump administration will also secure and defend the borders of the United States. And, yes, we will build a wall. And, yes, Mexico will pay for the wall. Thousands of Americans have been killed by illegal immigrants. The victims include 60-year-old Margaret Kostelnik, murdered in cold blood by an illegal immigrant right here in Ohio. You know the situation. You know the story. You know the story of Margaret. Earlier that day, her killer tried to rape a 14-year-old girl and shot another woman in the arm while she was with her children in a nearby park. Police encountered the man more than three weeks before the crime spree. But federal authorities, acting under Obama guidelines, refused to take him into custody, despite the fact that people were begging them to take this man off the streets. They wouldn't do it. I have a message for the cartels the drug dealers and the gang members preying on our citizens. When I win, your long reign of terror will come to a crashing and very unglorious end. We will also repeal the Obama-Clinton defense cuts and rebuild our badly depleted military, the greatest people on Earth. We will build new advanced aircraft at places like Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And we will change our foreign policy. Hillary Clinton's policies in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, through the Middle East into total mass turmoil. Now Hillary wants to start a shooting war in Syria in conflict with a nuclear-armed Russia, which could very well lead to World War III. I honestly think she's unstable. If you look at what she's saying, I actually believe she's unstable. <laughs> to all Americans, I say, it is time for new leadership. <laughs> We've spent now $6 trillion 
in the Middle East. We've spent, think of this, six trillion dollars. We could have rebuilt our country twice. If our presidents went to the beach, or in Obama's case, if he went out and played golf every single day without making any decisions, we would have been far better off. Let's compare my contract with the American voter against Hillary's agenda. Hillary will raise taxes as much as 45 and even 50 percent. That's just what you need. Just what you need is to pay even more taxes. Highest tax nation in the world. My contract calls for the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Hillary will massively expand regulation and shut down American energy. My contract eliminates every job-killing regulation. And we're going to put our miners back to work and our steelworkers back to work. <laughs> Hillary opposes school choice and wants federal bureaucrats to make education choices instead of the parents. My contract guarantees school choice and puts an end to Common Core. We bring our education to work. <laughs> Hillary oversaw massive cuts to the military budget and said the problems at the VA are not widespread. Oh, they are really widespread. The veterans have been treated so badly, so badly. She said they are not widespread, right? Tell that to a veteran that waits in line for nine days and can't see a doctor. My contract reverses the defense cuts, rebuilds our military, and gives veterans the right to see the doctor of their choice if they cannot see a veteran's doctor. <laughs> Hillary attacks the integrity of police officers. You see that all the time. My contract calls for funding, training, and supporting the incredible men and women of law enforcement. <laughs> Hillary wants to release more violent offenders from prison, even as murder rates rise almost 8 percent in Ohio. Did you know that? And have the largest one-year increase nationwide in 45 years. Did you know that? You don't hear that from the press. The biggest — think of it — the biggest increase in murder in 45 years. You don't hear that. My contract calls for a national plan to reduce violent crime and treat safety as a civil right. It is a civil right. <laughs> Hillary Clinton wants to effectively abolish the Second Amendment, and overturn the Supreme Court's ruling. It's a big one. You saw her the other night at the debate. I don't even think she understood the question, talking about the Heller case. <laughs> Who won the debate, by the way? I think that was an easy one. That was easy. My contract calls for saving the Second Amendment and protecting the right to keep and bear arms. Have to. Hillary wants immediate amnesty, open borders, and virtually unlimited immigration from the most dangerous regions of the world. My plan ends illegal immigration. By the way, people come in to our country. We have strong borders. We will have the wall. We're going to stop the drugs, but we're going to have big, beautiful doors in that wall. And people are coming into our country, a lot of people, but they're going to come in legally. Yeah. And we're going to suspend immigration from terror-prone regions. Hillary wants radical judges who will impose their personal opinions from the bench. My contract calls for the appointment of judges who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> Hillary wants to go even further than Obama on illegal executive action. I will terminate every single illegal Obama executive order and will restore the constitutional rule. We will restore the constitutional rule of law in this country.
have to have, or we don't have a country. Finally, Hillary wants us to think small, wants us to believe things can't change, and wants our lives to revolve around Washington, D.C. I'm asking you to dream big, to push for bold change, and to believe in a movement powered by the people and by their love of this great country. I'm asking you to renew your faith in the American dream. We are fighting for every citizen who believes that government should serve the people, not the donors and not the special interests. We are fighting to bring us all together as Americans. We'll leave. We are just — this is such a divided country. This is such a divided country. We are living now in a very divided country. Our country is going to come together with love. Just imagine what our country could accomplish if we started working together as one people, under one God, saluting one American flag. Once again, we will have a government of, by, and for the people. So we're going to work on a lot of things. We're going to work on coming together. We're going to work on our military. We're going to work on our inner cities. The inner cities need help, folks. They're so dangerous. They're crime-ridden. They're so dangerous. There are no jobs. There's essentially no education. We're going to work on our inner cities and make them great for African-American communities that are suffering in the inner cities, suffering. We're going to work on our jobs. We're not letting companies say, everybody's fired. We're moving to Mexico or wherever they want to move. We're going to make our product. We're going to sell it back into the United States. No problem. No. Well, there is going to be a problem. There's going to be a big problem. So I said, they want to do that. I don't call it retribution. I call it consequence. The consequence is you want to let all of these great people from Ohio and from North Carolina and from Pennsylvania and all of these other great places, you want to let them go and you want to leave and you want to go build this beautiful plant, you go ahead. But it's at 35 percent tax, as I said, and just 35 percent. And folks, and folks, it's such a problem. We're losing our companies. We're losing our, our financial. We're losing everything. We're losing our jobs. We're losing our great jobs. You see it. Even the other side admits we're losing our good jobs. Our good jobs are going to other countries. So we're going to stop it. It's not even hard to stop it. And when they know there is that kind of a consequence, they're not leaving. They're staying. They may go to a different state. And that's different, right? But they're staying. They're staying in our country. They're not leaving. And when they want to leave, that's okay, too, because they're going to pay a very, very big price, right? A friend of mine builds plants and factories, but he builds plants, and he's the biggest in the world. And he told me what's happening in Mexico is the eighth wonder of the world. Some of the biggest plants in the world, some of the most incredible plants that he's ever built. And I said, how are we doing in the United States? And he looks like, eh, not so great. We're going to change it, folks. We have to change it. I want Apple to be building factories in the United States and plants so they can make their product in the United States, not in China, not in Vietnam, not in all of the countries and other companies, other of our great companies. We don't make things anymore. We don't win anymore. We don't win anymore. We don't win with health care. We don't win with ISIS. We can't beat ISIS. We don't win anymore, and we don't make things anymore. It's going to change November 8th. You got to get out November 8th.
And you're going to say that this was, oh, that's a beautiful big sign. Now, those are fans. And by the way, I just spoke to our future vice president. And he's OK. Do you know he was in a big accident with a plane? The plane skidded off the runway and was uh, pretty close to grave, grave danger. But I just spoke to Mike Pence, and he's fine. He got out. Everybody's fine. Everybody's fine. But what a great decision it was to get Mike Pence. What a great guy he is. What a great job he's doing. So you're going to remember this evening, and you're going to remember, more importantly, your vote, whether it's on November 8th or sooner. And you're going to say it was the most important vote you've ever cast, because we're going to start making things again, and we're going to start winning again. That I can tell you. And together, as a big group and a loving group, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. God bless you. Go out and vote. God bless you. Thank you.